Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to another episode of Gullah Grits TV, where here on this channel, you already know that we make spirituality make sense by making it make sense, because ain't nobody got time to be confused. Today, we have an amazing treat for you guys. I have one of my best friends here with me today to share some knowledge on the mindset and reconstructing your mindset. So we're going to be taking a deep dive into her story, into her journey, and into her mind. You guys do not want to miss this. Let's get it. Right. So, hello guys. Hello. I'm super duper excited and I have a treat for you guys today. I have one of my besties from all the way way back Gullah Grits TV was Gullah Grits TV. I have my friend Christian <laughs> Scott here coaching with Christian. You can find her on Instagram and she has been a great friend of mine. She is an excellent mentor, a person of inspiration. And I really wanted to come on today. What better person to talk about reconstructing of the mindset than one of the most strongest mindsets I've ever had in my entire life. So I want you guys to give a gay round of applause to Christian Scott. <laughs> hey! Christian, Christian, I'm super yeah. duper excited. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for being here. And can you tell the people a little bit about you? Tell them about your story. Oh, where do I start? What do you want? <laughs> okay. So, hello everyone. I'm Christian Scott. I am number one, a mom. I love being a mom. I'm a mom to a handsome eight-year-old son, and I'm a wife to an awesome man. Professionally, I am a certified personal trainer and health coach and fitness nutrition spe specialist. I know that's a lot, <laughs> but I love helping people with their health and wellness, but I also do a lot of other things. I help people plan amazing trips because I feel like that's something that we all need for our health and wellness as well to see other cultures and be amongst people who are different than us or to just get away from daily life and take a little getaway for our own health and wellness like mentally and lastly I am a certified medical laboratory scientist so I am a science nerd yes that is me so everything that I do, especially when it comes to health and wellness, I do put a scientific spin behind it because I literally know the body inside and out. I look at it every day. <laughs> love that. Love that. And so what got you interested in speaking about the body? Because we're talking about the mind today. So what got you interested in studying the body, studying going inside on a deeper level of the body in itself? So originally, when we're young, we're, we think about, oh, I want to be this when I grow up, like when we're like five. So I remember I used to play doctor all the time with like my friends and with like my family members. I, I was like wrapping up their wounds and stuff. Um, so I had an interest in the medical field from a very early age. Once I got into college, that's when I figured out I don't want to be a doctor. <laughs> I don't think that's the path for me. So that's how I got into the more scientific approach when it comes to the body. As life goes on, you have a plan and it changes. So my plan changed again. And I met this amazing guy. We got married. I left the country. So <laughs> my whole like career plans just disappeared, which was fine. I would never take it back. I would do it all over again that same way. But I still had that strong interest for the body and how our body works from an inside out approach. So that's where I got into the health and wellness side of the body and like physical fitness, nutrition. And then it wasn't until recently, I would say the past, I want to maybe seven years, I really dug deep into the mindset and teaching my clients how the mindset what 
reach these goals that you're trying to reach. As far as if you're someone who's trying to lose weight or trying to build muscle or just trying to just become healthier overall. I always tell my clients and everyone, if your mindset is not right, none of it's gonna happen. Absolutely. And I that is oh you just I love your story just like it's like a fairy tale to me. So one of the things that I really want to talk about, like we're talking about reconstruction of the mindsets. So when you had to do that hard pivot in your life where your plans didn't work out exactly how you wanted to, there was it was a beautiful thing in the way your plans didn't work out. Not a lot of people have that story where their plans didn't work out, but they were blessed anyway. Yeah. Just graduated from college, you moved out out west, and that's where you met your now husband. So, what? How are you able to say that hard yes to yourself, knowing that you were going into the unknown with starting a life with someone and what you had planned for yourself? And how are you able to make that decision so easily, or what people would think is seamlessly easy? <laughs> In retrospect, when I think back to that time. For me, it was easy as far as being with this person. So a little, you know this about me, but like in case other people who don't follow me who are watching this podcast. So I, growing up, didn't have a positive role model of marriage at all. Like that, I come from a lineage of very strong, amazing Black women who didn't need anyone, quote unquote. So I had that in my mind that I was going to be that person, but a little piece of me didn't want to be that person. Yeah. When I met this individual, I was like, oh yeah, this, like, I remember telling you and yeah. two other friends, like, I'm, this is my husband. Like, like, I was like from what? The first day, from the first day, I remember, I'll never forget that. Yes. And what, Christian, what are you talking about? That's not what you want. Like, why would you say that? I was 100% sure. I was like, this is my husband. Like, this is going to be my husband. So I think in that aspect, like, it was an easy yes for me because it was just everything checked off. Like, he was just, like, amazing. It still is to this day. But the hard, so when we got together, we didn't know where he was going to be for his job. Like, I literally thought I was about, like, I'm living in Georgia because I moved back to Georgia at the time. I'm thinking I'm about to move to North Carolina in a couple months for his job. Mm-hmm. Then he calls me up. He's like, hey, I'm moving to Italy. And I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> okay. He's like, yeah, when I come back, we got to get married. And then I got to leave. And I was like, oh, okay. So in that moment, I was like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's go to the courthouse. I don't care because I know I want to be with you. And I know like you're my person. And I don't know anything about, at that time, I had never been out the country. I was like, I don't know anything about moving out the country, but I'm going to go. I always wanted to. Making a full circle here. When I don't know if you remember this, but my last year of college, I applied to the Peace Corps and I got accepted. Everything was good to go. And I thought I was going after college to the Peace Corps to Central and South America to do like public health work. And that was my dream. And that was like, in my mind, a way to explore and see different cultures, different countries and stuff. So that got shut down right after college when I found out I had some medical issues that I didn't know. And one thing about the Peace Corps, if you have anything wrong with you, they will, they stop you immediately because you're a liability. And I totally understand that. So I was really bombed and everything. Then I met my husband. Then we got married. Then he left the country. And then I left the country a few months later. And from that point, I've traveled all over Europe, all over Central America, some places in the States. And I've had this like amazing life, but I always knew that I was going to travel and be in a situation that I would travel and see the world. Now, how? I I didn't know how, but it happened and it did happen. Absolutely. 
And I have always, I always tell all of my clients, I always tell them like, it's not your job to figure out the how. It is not your job to figure out how. It is your belief in the what. Like, what do you want to do? And the universe is going to take care of the rest. Like, absolutely. So one thing that I have noticed about you since the beginning, since before, like, as soon as we met, is you have always been a person that is like extremely self-aware. Like the person that, like, it's very hard for you to set a goal <laughs> that I've seen. It's very hard for you to set a goal and you not go forth into it. And it plays a huge part in being self-aware. And I love how you're talking about your past and how you want it to, you want it to be a success story when it came to love. And, you know, that takes a level of self-awareness as well, especially with Black women or Black people in general. We have this whole story in our head of how love is supposed to go for us. And you created your own story and you're like, no, even though I see how this was and it's great, love it. But you also wanted to make yeah. your own story. So your self-awareness is just top tier, top tier. But I want to talk about that. Like, how can being self-aware help you to reconstruct a mindset and whatever you want to do? How does being self-aware to you help construct a mindset? First of all, being self-aware is something that takes a lot of work. And it's the work that you have to continuously do. And that's what I do every day that I wake up. But I feel like you cannot be self-aware unless you are ready to deal with your own bullshit. <laughs> like, don't. if you cannot deal with your shit and dig deep and address it, you will never be self-aware. Like, mm. it's impossible. And also, I feel like with being self-aware, you have to be willing to do the work and you have to release a lot of maybe traumas or beliefs that were placed on you as a, at an early age. And you have to deconstruct your mind a little bit from stories that your family have put on upon you or society or whatever. And you have to be willing to let that shit go and just create your own story, but also be self-aware enough to call out your bullshit. <laughs> Like, I call out my bullshit every day. I'm like, girl, get the, let's get it together. What are you doing? <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. I know, I know, I know. Why am I taking you out of the middle of it? But I just wanted to give you guys a thank you so much for being here. And if you like this video and you like more of this video or more videos like this, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you can be notified of upcoming videos and make sure you guys check out my instagram and my tiktok here so that way you guys can know what's happening in the life of gullah grits tv let's get back to the show get it together Nate christian you know for a fact that she will also let you know get your shit together like people yeah. will let anyone know and that always comes from a place of love so let's put it into a little bit more of some practical sense how could someone, how would you recommend, how do you recommend to your clients? Because I know you you work with fitness, you work in fitness, you work in travel. So there's a huge environment that you are creating for the people that you're working with. And in order for them to get out of their heads for, to become travelers or to get ready for the yes. industry, they got to get tired of their own bullshit. So how are some practical ways that you advise your clients to to get out of their head, to get out of their own way, to accept that they were wrong or they were, have been in the wrong and how to move forward from blaming themselves. So one thing that I have found is powerful for myself as well as like any client I've ever worked with, especially in the health and wellness realm, is journaling. Mm. People sleep on journaling, like they <laughs> sleep on it, but I feel like it's an amazing way to just get all the shit out of your head and just write it down, okay? I have journaled since I was 12 years old. And I have a- I started at 13. And here's my latest. Uh, I literally, like, off topic, but I have a stack of journals and I want my grandchildren to read them one day. Yes, absolutely. Because I just- 
I want to leave like his, it's like a piece of your family history. And I want to leave that for them. So anyways, okay, back to journaling. Um, <laughs> So I do a certain method for journaling because it helps me stay very self-aware and mindful and really with my eye on whatever goal that I'm trying to accomplish in that moment. Or it could be within five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, whatever. And this is how I coach my clients. So number one, in my journal, I free write. That's the first thing I do, free write. Whatever is on my mind, what happened yesterday, what's happening today, just get it all out. It could be positive, negative, whatever you wanna do, just write. Then second, I write five things every day that I am grateful for because the world is crazy, life is chaotic. We got so much that we can sit and be miserable about what are you happy? What are you thankful for? What are you happy about? Let's focus on the positivity. We all have been there. Life is crazy. Like we go through it. Okay. No one's perfect. We may appear perfect, but we are not. I am not. Okay. And that would be the first one to tell you. But I always focus on gratitude. The third thing I do after that is now this would be different for everyone, depending on your religion or what spiritual belief you have. It could be the universe. It could be whoever you pray to or that you believe in a higher power. I pray for someone. Sometimes it's someone that I don't like at the moment. <laughs> mm. I'm like, please pray for this person. I don't like them, but just, I don't want any ill like stuff in the world or oozing out of me toward certain individuals sometimes when I'm like angry with someone so I'll pray for them like it's like a complete mind fuck but I'll do it like I've been in situations where I have prayed with someone that I literally just had like the biggest fallout with because I feel like sometimes when people hurt you or say hurtful things it's because they're going through their own shit no. Not like most of the time they are going through something that they cannot express and you just are the person that they blow up on. It is what it is. It is so I just pray for it. I pray for people. I pray for things, good things to happen for others because I just feel like it's a way to humble yourself and to not put all the focus on you all the time. Of course, put focus on you, but we also have to serve others in some way. So yeah. in my mind, that's how I help to serve others. I pray for them behind closed doors. Because I am not the person who's like, praying for you. Oh, my God. I hate that. that. I'm that, sorry. People be like, I'm a praying for you. That was the prayer. <laughs> okay. Like, bro, just don't tell me about it. And okay. Anyways. Just, just watch the person of the prayer and then be like. Yes. Then the last thing I do, which... Kevin, I can promise you, this is the most powerful part. I'm a, I script my life. Mm -hmm. I write down anywhere between five to 10 things, but I started with, I am blank. Things that haven't even happened yet. Just things that I would want in my life, things that I want to bring into my life. And I call it what I am calling in. So what mm -hmm. I'm calling in. So I'm calling this into my life, into me. I am on the travel TV show as a host. That is one of mine right now. I really want to be on TV yes. as a travel and a travel show. That's like a dream. I like you're a narrator for that one of those shows. So yes, like <laughs> I am on a travel TV show. Yes. Uh, so I do all these I am statements, and what's so funny about this is. Because I have been journaling for so long, I have seen this shit come to life, okay? My husband is that person. My life I have now is because of that. Like, all of it is because of, I think, my mindset, obviously, and this journaling method that I've used for forever. Journaling, that was a long time long one on journaling but um <laughs> but it works so journaling every day i think meditation is amazing for 
helping you reconstruct your mind and just really just own in on like you yourself and what you really want in this life. Uh, speaking and, of meditation, yeah. I want to talk about that. Speaking of meditation, not everybody in the world has the time to sit and they hey, sit crisscross applesauce and they're doing the mudra <laughs> and all that thing and going oh, oh for hours. <laughs> Not everybody has that time. And you, being a mom, being a wife, being having a, uh, an entrepreneur and working as well, how do you find the time? And what is some techniques that you use to get that mindfulness? Because that like, meditation is all about mindfulness. So how do you get that time? How do you squeeze it into a busy mom schedule? I think a lot of people have this misbelief that meditation has to be like 30 plus minutes. It doesn't. You can literally meditate for two to three minutes. It's just the idea of just being to quiet the body and the mind. And also when it comes to quieting the mind, it doesn't mean meditation doesn't equal no thoughts in the brain. You're just zenned out. That's I don't think that's human nature per se. And I think it takes a certain level of meditation, like throughout the years to get to that level where you could just wipe your brain free of thoughts. I think it's more, I think if people focus more on calming the mind, but if you have things pop up, just bringing it back into the mind, just bring it back into to the self instead of having all these things shoot out, just bring it all back in as these ideas or thoughts pop up. So I think that would help people who have the, I can't do it, like mindset toward meditation. But I personally, I prefer to do it first thing in the morning when I wake up, because if I don't, the chances are it probably won't happen. <laughs> so, so something, I don't mean to cut you off, but I had heard this, a spiritualist say this the other day, and it stuck with me so profound because that early morning hour is so important for you to get manifestations done and manifestations is what's going to recreate that mindset and he says that i wake up you know how the old women back in the day they used to wake up early in the morning read the bible yeah and he, he said that he asked his grandmother why she wakes up so early to do that and his grandmother told him you got to meet god halfway and that was so profound she's i wake up early to because I have to meet God halfway. And a lot of people don't really understand that. What she's saying is I'm putting in the work. I'm showing God or source or the supreme essence. I'm showing myself, the God in me, that I can, that I can sacrifice this moment to be able to, to be able to call in the things and quiet the mind or to call in the things that I desire for my life. And also because like I work with so many in the fitness industry and in the wellness industry, I work with so many individuals who have a crazy amount of stress and stress does terrible things to the body. Okay. I've been victim myself and I worked with so many individuals who are like, just, I call it prisoners to stress. Our lives are stressful. Yes, absolutely. We don't have control of anything outside of us, but we do have control on how to manage our stress and our stress levels. So meditation is a big way to do that because there aren't many times in the day where we can calm our brain and our nervous system and have a moment of peace. If you're a mom, a dad, you know, anything, if you're a human on this planet, chances are... <laughs> Right. You don't, yeah, you don't have those moments of quietness and peace. So by finding just two to three minutes a day and then trying to work your way up to five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, 30, an hour. Like I would love to be at the hour mark one day. It ain't happening no time soon, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, you take them? Yeah, but I'm happy with my five to 10 minutes. And it really does. It helps. Mm -hmm. And being and it, in, and in that five to 10 minutes, like that's what she, that's what she, like she is, like what you're explaining, like the, in that five to 10 minutes, okay, we put five to 10 minutes, but when you're in the meditation, you are literally outside of time. You feel that no time space and you're just like, I'm here. So five to 10 minutes won't really hurt you. 
or because yeah. you're like, I, I, you don't feel guilty that I only did five minutes today. No, you're outside of time and you sat into yourself for five minutes today. Yeah. And that is a lot. Yes. That is more than 80% of the population is doing. And that's why when it comes to stress, because so I see this on a medical standpoint, mm -hmm. but in the medical field, the effects of stress on the body, like it is atrocious. It's awful. So that's why when my wellness clients that I coach and my fitness clients, I really, the number one thing we focus on is the mindset and like ways to reduce stress levels. And meditation is one of the tools that I recommend because it has worked wonders for my life in many different areas. So I just really hone in on that. And I know it's like taboo for a lot of people, but I tell people you can listen to a guided meditation. You can listen to some binaural beats, like the music, like just anything to just sit and just be one with yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I hope I don't get a call here. <laughs> but also with what are some of those stressors that what are some of those those reactions from a medical standpoint? What are some of those reactions that your body can have due to the stress that you because I, I don't really want to say that you allow yourself to experience, but in a way you do allow yourself to experience these things. I always tell people you're always in control, even when you're not in control, because you're in control of how you respond to not being in control. So what are some of the stress or what are some of the medical things or what are some of the side effects of being stressed? So there's tons of different side effects. I can give you a personal story about me a couple years ago when I was going through my program to be certified to be a medical laboratory scientist. I was in this really stressful environment, which I had never been in ever in my life. So this was the first time going through this program and going through, it was, just, it was just very strenuous and it was rough. It was fucking hard. It was hard, okay? <laughs> I was not doing anything for my mental health at the time. My focus was get through this program, get through this program. And I stopped working out. I stopped eating healthy and I stopped working on my mindset for that one year. So during that year, I had my first panic attack. I've never had a panic attack in my life. And I literally. What happened? I was driving in my car. Nothing happened. It was just, I had just left class and it was just like information overload, stress, stress, like just stressed me out to the max. And on the drive home, I had a panic attack for no reason, like for a reason. But like at the moment, I didn't know what was happening. I was like, what is, ha am I dying? What is, and yeah. it was a panic attack. And I literally felt like my life, I, I was going to die. I felt like I was going to die. And yes. it was just stress induced. I've been dealing with gut issues for the past three years. And it is, got all the testing and everything done. Come to find out it's stress induced IBS, <laughs> which is really not good. It's, it's, I don't recommend it to anyone. It's awful. Yeah. So now yeah. I'm in a spot where I can where I'm focusing more. I had to remove myself from some stressful situations, jobs, relationships. And now I'm like on this path back to healing myself of the high incidences of stress. So. Like I, I those panic attacks ain't no joke. Like, and no. I wanted to really talk about that panic attack because of the fact I've had a panic attack before. I've had actually had two. And... I know for a fact that if people, some people, you would not know w what it feels like. You won't even know. You'll be like, the, my, the second panic attack I had, that, that, was the, that was the one where I was like, oh, I'm having a panic attack. Because I was like, why am I, why is my heart beating like this? Why am I shaking like this? This is weird. Then I realized I was having a panic attack. But the scariest one that I experienced was when I was straight PTSD, fresh out of the military. And I remember I was with my friends and we were laughing about something. And in the middle of me laughing, 
I started crying. But it wasn't that I was crying. <laughs> like, I wasn't like, <laughs> like, it was like, and I, it scared me shitless. I was like, I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm still laughing. I was like, that's okay. That was the first time that I felt like my brain just like disconnected and I had no power. A lot of people out there, that's why I really wanted you to talk about that panic attack because it's very important for some people to know they might not even know that they're going through a panic attack and they could be having several in a day and not yeah. knowing that. So those panic attacks are very important for you to be like, pay attention to your body. Doing those mindful techniques that you were talking about, those things will really help because if you are if you can't come into yourself and check in on yourself, you're not going to be able to check on yourself, okay? Let's or anyone it. else. Or anyone else. And a lot of people are trying to... Yes. I tell world. people all the time, if you don't take care of you... You will not be able to take care of yourself, period. Yeah. If your health and wellness and mental health is not good, you are not going to show be able to show up 100% for others. That's why I am a, I am like a advocate for hiring someone if you need help with your wellness journey or like just self-care stuff because especially for women, especially us who have families, our caretakers to other people, we put ourselves last. And I see this all the time with my clients. And I'm like, you have to take care of you. You have to do this workout. You have to do this meditation. You have to do this meal prep or hire, I don't know, a healthy meal prep service or whatever it may be. Because if you don't, you are not gonna show up as your best self for your loved ones. I know for me, if I don't work out, I am not a good mom. I am not a good wife because I'm just like, it's just like a stress relief for me. Yeah. Like my workouts are like mental health. I'm like, oh, I feel great. It's a confidence boost. It's endorphin junkie over here. I'm <laughs> like, I need my endorphins. <laughs> and I know that about myself, but I wouldn't know that about myself if I didn't have self-awareness -aware and listen to my body. And okay, when I work out, I feel like this. When I don't work out, I feel like dirt. So mm -hmm. the key is I need to work out. <laughs> and that gratitude plays a huge role in that as well. Because when you say like, a lot of people, they get scared of that feeling of, I have to do this, I have to do this. And if you can just switch those words around, I get to do this. I get yeah. to work, I get to take care of my family. I get to get up for work. I get to get up for work, even though a lot of people out there cannot. And there are people that, you know, are literally like vegetables. And I don't know if that's the proper yeah. term. But they're like vegetables no. and they would love to be able to get up and go to work. And they would love to, some people would love to have your stress. Some people would love to have your yes. birth right now. That part. And I think that's why, like, when things go south in my life, or shit happens. I really try, I don't want this to come across as toxic pos positivity because I don't believe in that at all. I'm a believer in like, when shit happens, feel your feelings and feel that shit, but also deal with it so you can move on. Because a lot of people get stuck in this head space where they're just in their own shit, just rolling around in their own shit for like ever. And they're miserable. And it's just, okay, how about we deal with it, feel the feelings, feel the emotions, and work through it instead of just sitting in it. For years, for years. And years. years. Everyone knows someone like that. And it is sad. Because yeah. guess what? Life is going on around you and you're stuck. You know? I don't want that. And now, and I, that leads me to my next question. So... What would you recommend and in your process of being a human? Because, yeah, we sitting here on this camera right now, but we are not perfect, like we mentioned before. But we consistently try our best to maintain that level of, I'm okay, that level of equilibrium. So what are some techniques or some advice that you would give to consistently maintain a good mindset for yourself? I would say, especially for the beginner who's really trying to go on their own mindset journey, just pick one thing 
that you believe is going to help you with your mindset, whether it's journaling, reading 10 pages of a positive book a day, whatever it may be, going to therapy, whatever it may be. Meditation, just choose something and try to be consistent with it. But don't have the mindset of, I have to do this one thing for an hour a day. Be realistic because ain't nobody got time. Like, no one. We out here all struggling with time, okay? But just pick the one thing and just consistency. Consistency (laughs) is key for a lot of things. So, yeah, just pick something and be consistent. Absolutely. Y'all hear that? Pick something and be consistent. Consistency is, like, literally our hardest thing. And we it is. Consistency with the time and time frames, like, that that can cause anxiety. So let's put it as, a, as an equation. Consistency minus or time project minus consistency equals anxiety. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love what you were going to say. I was going to mention one thing a lot of people confuse when it comes to working on your mindset. And because I get a lot of people say, Christian, you're so motivated to work out. You're so motivated to meal prep and all these things. I'm like, no, I'm disciplined. Mm. I am not motivated at all, to be honest. (laughs) Today, I did not want to go (laughs) work. I I did not want to work out today in my 100 plus degree garage gym because my gym is in my garage where I train my clients and film all my videos for online. I didn't want to do that. Like, it's AC in my house. It feels good. (laughs) But I'm disciplined. I'm disciplined. I'm like, okay, I know I have to get a workout in today because this is like day two of the week. For my workout schedule so i need to get this done because i'm not going to have another day and i'm committed and disciplined to doing five days a week mm. it's discipline so i think when a lot of people are looking for that motivation you're going to be looking a long time yeah yeah the motivation oh my gosh you spoke a word there because there were so many times where I was like sitting here wondering about being inspired and I would be motivated to be inspired to continue content creation and things like that. But it took me so long for me to be able to sit and like actually do it. I'm like, where's that motivation I had in this year? Where's that motivation I had at this time? And it didn't, it never came. I just started doing what I liked. And so eventually I was like a spark of inspiration happened, but I had yeah. to be disciplined to sit down and want to find that, want to get that. And I had to stay consistent with it. And that's where it started to come from. That's where these new ideas started to come from. So like you are absolutely right. Absolutely. Now I wanted to ask you about if there were any because you said you mentioned about reading 10 pages a day, which that has been yes. essentially on my vision board because I wanted to read more this year. So I actually bought some different books. I actually just try to read a little bit more, but it still is difficult, especially with someone who with dyslexia, but that's not an excuse. But I want to make sure about reading that 10 pages a day. I really like that, reading 10 pages a day. Now, what are some books? Are there some books or are there some resources that you could recommend to to the public? Yes, absolutely. So I have a book, Arthur, and a podcast that I... I will write that all is, of them. <laughs> that is amazing for just growth and mindset. So the book, I wrote it down, Atomic Habits. That book really showed me how all of our habits, how they basically sum up your whole life. And if you want a different life or you want something different in your life, you have to take a look back at your habits. And it shows you how the what you think is the mundane, little bitty, like nothing things that you do daily, no, that shit adds up over time. It like it, and then it's profound. So that goes for bad habits as well. Like I tell my clients, sometimes I help people come to me like, I want to lose 50 pounds in 30 days. And I'm like, how long have you had the extra 50 pounds on you? You didn't gain 50 pounds in 30 days. If you did, you need to go see a medical doctor. 
So you cannot expect for all this weight to fall off in 30 days, but you've been overweight for three years. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? It gradually piled on because of habits that you had or ha- or like things you didn't do in your life, you moving your body or whatever. You cannot expect it to just fall off in 30 days. It doesn't work like that. So that book is amazing, Atomic Habits. An author that I love, and if you are a spiritual person, this book is for you. Or if you are someone who was raised to think a certain way, but you're battling as you grow up, and you're like, I don't know if I believe that way anymore. It's weird because I have my own mindset now. Napoleon (laughs) Hill, that author, all of his books are just magnificent. They will challenge you 100%. But I love his story because he was a he's all about like manifestation and things like that back in the day. This was like in the 20s where no one was talking about that. I love like those he things. was like that. Yes. So all of his books are amazing. I just finished Conversations with the Devil. Oh. That one Bruh, I'm like, what did I just read? And <laughs> it was phenomenal. And a podcast that I love besides yours, obviously, <laughs> On Purpose by Jay Shetty. Oh, he is just, and he's just an amazing person. And he really focused on like positivity, positive mindset. And he talks about like real life shit that's happening he addresses all kind of things like i think i was listening to one today and it was talking about men and their feelings and how men cannot express their feelings and the guest on that show was phenomenal just talking about he's a rapper he was talking about like his rapper life and like how he had a mental breakdown because he couldn't express his feelings he didn't know how you don't want to be seen as a punk or so it's a, it's a really he has amazing guests on his podcast and his podcasts are just phenomenal and he talks about everything like everything you can imagine so it's a good one absolutely you have put me on because i'm like <laughs> i don't know why i love doing that because you gain such a new information because you get to see the you the world from someone else's perspective like i have my own book recommendations and things that i like to read and things like that but to have some new material maybe the answer that i'm looking for or the answer that i want to align with is in this different information and it's not in all the books or all the techniques or all the videos that i've seen before all the podcasts that i've listened to before maybe it's in this specific one that you have given us today i really appreciate you sharing your book recommendations podcast and brought the recommendations you guys make sure that you guys go on over and check that out i will link it in the description here for i want to ask you i want to close out really strong i want you to have a message What is a message that you have for the people on their mindset, on on mindset in general? What is something that you want to leave with the people? Ooh, that's a good one. Don't be afraid to do the hard work. Just take it day by day and do it. And your future self is waiting for you on the other side. I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christian, for being here with me. Can you tell the people where all they can find you and if you what new events and new projects you have and you're working on and where can they yeah. find you? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram and TikTok, Coaching with Christian, like the religion. Yes, it's spelled that way. <laughs> coaching with Christian on Instagram and on TikTok and I'm actually in enrollment right now for a body reset program that I have coming out on September the 11th. I know it's not the best date, but that's when it's launching. It's a six week group wellness coaching program that focuses on mindset, nutrition and fitness. So just all of the, what I call the three pillars of health. It's for everyone. You don't have to be like in super crazy, fitness shape 
that's very begin beginner friendly because it is focusing on resetting a wellness journey. So yeah, I will give you the link and you can put that in your, in your thing. Yeah. Or if they follow me, you'll see it there. You can get my link in my Instagram account. But yeah. That's indication, y'all. Y'all going over there and flood her DMs and flood her. Uh, <laughs> yes, if you want to travel, you want to go see the world, you want to get on this health and wellness journey, let's go. Let's do it. But, all right, because this is nothing but progress <laughs> over here. I really appreciate you, Christian, for coming out today. I appreciate you for answering these beautiful questions and having your spin. Because there's, there's mindsets all over the place, but you got to share a part of yours and i really love being able to view into your world so thank you so much for that i really oh, appreciate you guys watching here today is there anything else for me christian i think you're awesome oh, <laughs> and, and i have to say this for those of you who are following this man i've known him for a very long time and the growth oh honey <laughs> i mean for both of us but like this is a phenomenal man to listen to and learn from because I've seen him from back in the day, college oh. days to now, and the growth is like unbelievable. And I'm just proud of you. So yeah. Much. Each one, <laughs> one, reach one, become Let's one. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs> Bye.